Yeah, welcome back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is uh, Catching Up with Kaka'ako, especially Kaka'ako Makai. And the reason is there's, there's a bill in the legislature that would effectively repeal the prohibition on residential development in Kaka'ako Makai. And we want to talk to people who know something about the planning aspects of Kaka'ako Makai. And one of those people is uh, Wayne Takamini. He's here with us today, and he's the chair of the Kaka'ako Makai Community Planning Advisory Council. Welcome to the show, Wayne. Hi, Jay. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So um, what is it to be the chair of the Kaka'ako Makai Community Planning Advisory Council? Talking about um, you know the history, your history and the history of the council. So tell us about that. Well, my history in Kaka'ako Makai began um, as a student at Roosevelt High School, and I started body surfing at Point Panics. Um, then later on, in 2005, they started talking about um, the AMB RFP to build 200 foot condominiums just a few blocks away from Point Panic. So we started to get involved and we created what's called the uh, People's Preferred Plan, which was a um, it was a rendering of a proposal that instead of condominiums, we would try to create a um, cultural experience in Kaka'akumakai. And uh, some of these included like a um, exhibition for water sports, uh, Hall of Fame, and other things like farmers markets. So we had a fish and farmers market concept. And it began to get more popular as people started to realize that we would be losing a great recreational asset in Kaka'akumakai because uh, it's really the only other sport that's undeveloped in Honolulu along the shoreline. And when we did our surveys um, as the Kaka'akumakai Community Planning Advisory Council, we found that the number one thing people wanted to see was more, um, more park space in the Makai or shoreline area and expansion of the shoreline promenade. And this promenade is part of a concept that was introduced by Governor Wahe'e called the lay of green, which would be a, a lay of parks, setbacks from Aloha Tower to Waikiki. And this is where the whole thing started to come together. This was a very powerful concept, the lay of green. So later on in 2005, um, we defeated the uh, proposal for, for condominiums and the legislature created laws with the prohibition of residential development by the HCDA in Kaka'akamakai. They also created a law that uh, prohibited sales of state land in Kaka'ako. So even if you were to develop a condominium, you wouldn't be able to sell the condominiums because it's prohibited by state law. Um, so this already, what they were planning to do in the uh, Lingo administration was to develop these 200 foot condominiums. And they had like a series of three of them that were right next to the um, Kewala Basin Harbor and then sell the land to A and B. So A and B, I think for $20 million, I, I think that was the number we were talking about. $20 million would, would get all the profits from selling condominiums. And, you know, it's crazy. The real estate market in Kaka'ako on the Maka side of Alamana Boulevard, I think, I think the last, this was like 10 years ago, they were saying penthouses for $36 million. So I don't know if that would fit into the definition of affordable housing that, um, that OHA is, is talking about. Well, so during that 2005 session, they also made a resolution 
um, that require the HCDA, Hawaii Community Planning, Planning Development Authority, which is uh, has a jurisdiction in Kakakamakai, to create a working group that will help to in the implement the development and planning and implementation of a master plan for Kakakamakai. So that became the Kakakamakai Community Planning Advisory Council. And so by the legislature, we were allowed to get $500,000 to do this planning thing. And later on, it was revised to 750,000. And we completed the master plan in October of 2010. Wow. And what did it what did it provide this master plan? Well, this master plan was um created by several uh, groups that were um part of it and we we broke it down into um focus groups. But <coughs> excuse me. I'd like to read the um vision for Kaka'akumakai that was adopted by the HCDA. Kaka'akumakai is a community's gathering place, a safe place that welcomes all people from Keiki to Kapuna with enriching cultural, recreational, and educational public uses. A special place that continues the shoreline lay of green with scenic beauty connects paramatic, paramatic vistas, Malka and Makai, and encourages ecological integrity of land, air, and sea. Kaka'aku Makai honors, celebrates, and preserves the historic sense of place, Hawaiian cultural values, and our unique island lifestyle for present families and future generations. So, this is what we um we proposed, and this is what the HDDA approved. Um, I, I'm sorry to say, but uh, you know the Hawaiian, the OHA concept of making residential in Kaka'akamakai that will likely be sold to the highest bidder um, is really something that um, is contrary to our vision. For Kakakumokai. Well, the plan was um, never implemented. Well, in 2011, we started meeting with OHA. Uh, the then chair was uh, Colette Machado, a beautiful woman, and you know she she was in, she said she was impressed with our Kakakumokai. Um, master plan. And um, then it was uh, then a concept where OHA would would be um, taking Kaka'akumakai as compensation for their ceded land. Um, ceded land, I guess they weren't paid. They just didn't feel that they were compensated well for that. So we thought, OK, fine. If they want to develop our, our plan, then it would be okay. But later on in the session, OHA introduced the bill, or it was introduced by the supporters of OHA, but the bill was actually to, um, to repeal our law that prohibits um, development of re residential development in Kaka'akumakai or planning by the HCDA. And uh, through, through the different organizations, and there are over 55 organizations that participated in the um, creation of the master plan for Kaka'akamakai, including OHA. OHA had two representatives that were part of what we call the steering committee. They were ex officio on the steering committee, and they were active in the creation of the master plan. But that um, repeal of the residential laws in Kaka'akamakai was defeated. And it had repeatedly been brought up by OHA. OHA's law to um, take um, the land for 
in Kakaku Makai, I think it was supposed to be a $200 million, million dollar settlement was approved. And they have, um, since that land was, I think it was desi designated as public trust lands. Um, so they have uh, acquired that. Um, several times they tried to repeal the law of residential in Kakakumakai. And I believe in 2012, the attorney generals uh, said that that um, proposal for uh, OHA to, um, to repeal the law is actually unconstitutional because it would be um, favoring a entity over the general public. I'm so... Did, they, did OHA ever explain to you, Colette Machat or anybody else over there, why they had um, changed their position from supporting your master plan to doing, you know, the reverse? Well, uh, we had a, there was an area senator for Kaka'ako at that time, is was Senator, former Senator Brickwood Galuteria. He is also right now one of the just newly elected at large OHA um, board members and trustee. Um, he appeared to be favored um, the residential development in Kakakumakai and repealing the law. It's really unfortunate, but um, then governor in 2010 was Neil Abercrombie. And in 2005, when he was uh, um, no, this, a, um, I believe he was a House of Representative for Congress. Mm -hmm. He actually came down and had an interview and he spoke against the AMB development. So at that time, we believed that he would be, uh, would support our view of keeping Kaka'akumakai free and clear of residential. And then later on, <laughs> he, he changed his mind while he was governor and said, oh, we should give the Hawaiians the land and let them build residential. So unfortunately, that didn't go well with the public and he became a one-term governor. Rickwood also supported residential in Kaka'akumakai and uh, he was very unpopular with um, his re-election hopes and he was um, soundly defeated by the current Senator Sharon Moriwaki. So, you know, it's, it's very unpopular. When we did our surveys as CPAC, it came out near the bottom. You know, nobody really wanted residential. And maybe it's because the people who were participating just wanted to see something else besides residential. Uh, a lot of people feel that it would actually become a gated community, like something like how you know, Koalena is with the hotels there. I mean, you can't, I think there's two public parking spaces, you know, to go to the beaches there. We feel that it would become a gated community. And, and that, uh, of course, the land wouldn't be state land because if you're going to build a, a 400 foot condominium, um, developers are going to want some interest in that uh, development. And they, they want compensation, which is going to probably be that they're going to own part of that condominium and sell the units for financial gains. So it just didn't pan out mm. in our yeah. Other people have said the same thing. So if you were to appear uh, in front of some committee in the legislature today uh, where they are considering this um, this this current version of the bill that would um, allow residential development uh, in Kakakamakai. What would you say to them? Uh, probably the same thing I said in 2011. I think in 2012, last year. I think there were like about four or five times that OHA has tried to repeal this law and failed. So similar to what I've said before, because there's nothing new. I mean, I don't think we see anything new with the land. Um, 
I think a lot of people are, are just, you know, tired of OHA coming back and then we have to go and we've seen that drill many times before. I'm sorry, I didn't count so many times. We tried to repeal the law, but it seemed like a whole bunch, you know, and so we're all getting a little tired of this, but we're all pretty steadfast in our beliefs that um, residential in Kakakamakai is something that shouldn't be there. Yeah, you know, one, one other thing I wanted to ask you is that just suppose, hypothetically, just suppose that um, they're able to get it through and they are able to build a 40-story high-rise condo there. What would happen in your view of it uh, and your, you know, your uh, mass, master plan uh, community development view of it? Uh, what would happen? to a Kakaako Makai, what would it be like? Well, Jay, you have to remember that this land was a dump. They had incinerators there that were burning all the Opala and the incinerators created ash. These ash is, there's documented in several phase two environmental studies that it's bad stuff. It's lead arsenic, PVCs, we have reports that they used to take cattle off the boats, run them through these pools of DDT to kill all of the parasites. And all of that stuff is still underground. And so if they're gonna build a, a huge building, they're gonna have to dig up underneath, put in infrastructure. And when they're doing that, they're gonna be hitting um, toxic waste. And another thing that comes up is that in Kaka'akumalka, whenever they throw up these big buildings, it changes the flow of water, underground water, and then you see sinkholes popping up. So what happens if there's a sinkhole in Kaka'akumakai with all of this toxic waste? Um, you have high levels of lead, you have arsenic, DBCs, a benzene and all not very good stuff and you can't really go and dig that stuff up if you disturb any of that stuff then the equipment you're using to disturb it becomes contaminated and you have to decontaminate that if you want to move some of that um, toxic waste out then you have to get a permit to dump in somewhere and I don't think you'll find any place on Oahu that's going to take that toxic waste as a disposal site. You're having a hard time just finding regular waste to, to dispose. So the, the land really does not work well with high, with, with high buildings. It's just something that there's going to be a problem with. And then for us to use the ocean for recreation, it's, it's terrible. What are you going to do? You're going to put this stuff up and then you're going to end up saying the public cannot go in the water, cannot use the, the recreational, um, ocean recreational places uh, because there's toxic waste. Uh, you know, there's also underground systems under Kakakumakai. It was basically reef before. So what happens when the you disturb all of this toxic material? It's gonna come dislodged from the sediment and then it could flow out into the ocean and affect the reef. And also like once again, surfers out there in the water, mm -hmm. you know. But, well, you've identified a bunch of, of problems. I mean, uh the, the the toxic soil, the, the fact that it would be disturbed, it would leach off uh, all around it, the, the water problems in general, the access problems, uh, I guess that's a community issue, maybe a cultural issue for Native Hawaiians. Uh, so this all sounds like uh, it needs to be thoroughly investigated uh, by way of an, an EIS. Has, has your group taken a position on whether an EIS would be appropriate before the legislature acts? You know, 
I think the legislature should just shut it down. I mean, this is something that residential in Kaka'akumakai has come up previously so many times. And this law was enacted in 2005. It's nearly 20 years. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I think you should say, you know, it's not going to happen. But we, we look at it and say, well, it's a free country and um, we'll put up our, uh, our point of view, and which is also the point of view of the um, attorney generals you know, saying that this um, allowing OHA to um, be given an exemption to this law is not something that is constitutional. Mm -hmm. So there, there are several fronts on this. And I think one of OHA, um, they want to develop, um, I guess, affordable housing. And, you know, I, I believe the legislature would would swap land with them someplace else. So it, the issue of affordable housing is something that I don't believe is something that really holds water. That they wanna build affordable housing in an area where penthouses are going for 35, 40 plus million dollars. It's not affordable for um, your, your, your um, Hawaiian people. I mean, they should, there's opportunities other places um, that will have more land you know, available for OHA to build their affordable housing for um, their, their cultural, their culture. Um, but, you know, I don't think Kaka'akumakai Kaka is that place. It sounds like you're going to continue the effort to stop this, the repeal of this bill to stop residential development. Are, are you and other members of your uh, council, are you gonna go down and testify on it this year? Yes, and it's not really stopping them, but we support the law, existing law, the law that has been created in 2005 and continues to this day. So um, we support that. I mean, I, I know a lot of people who are Hawaiians and, you know, um they have their their um beliefs in what they should do in kakakamakai a lot of them have come up to me and said wayne um you know if this comes up you know let us know you know we don't want residential here so you know there's the people that are hawaiians that um don't really believe that this is the correct thing for OHA to pursue. Wayne Takamini, the, uh, the chair of the Kaka'ako Makai uh, Community Planning Advisory Council, which has been following the action in Kaka'ako Makai for many, many years. And we really appreciate you coming on and talking with us, Wayne. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jane. Uh for this opportunity to educate people on what the issues are. I think you've done a great job doing that, Wayne. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, Please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.